Hey folks, see you Rachana Rana de here and I welcome you all to a very important video and this video is more important for you if you already have DMART in your portfolio. Now as I shoot the video, the stock is down almost by 8.5%, the market is yet to close but it should close on a similar note is what I feel. Now many people who are especially newbie investors typically invest in companies uh, wherein they are using the products of that company. So let's say people who are using let's say Airtel, they may tend to buy Airtel or those who have an account with let's say SBI or HDFC or ICICI, they may tend to open and uh, they may tend to buy stocks of these banks or let's say there is a customer who is f a frequent buyer from DMART, then that person may have considered buying DMART shares, okay. So that is the reason why I thought that I should make a small video uh, but tell you what are the reasons of this fall of almost eight and a half percent. Now uh, many people are like Hardy K Rashna will give us all the gyan but I want Rashna to tell the exact target price of the stock. Are, who am I? When all these big big brokerage houses also differ in their target price so much? Don't believe me. Have a look at this. JP Morgan has given a target price of 4,700. Morgan Stanley has given a target price of 3,700, whereas Bernstein has given a target of 5,800. And the ratings that they have given, JP Morgan has given a neutral weight, Morgan Stanley underweight, Bernstein outperform. And do you really expect me to tell that what is the exact target price uh, for this? Answer is obviously no, right? So I just thought of telling you that how even brokerage houses have such varied views. But we are not here for the target price. We are here to understand what went wrong in DMART today, basically their Q2 results came out and the results were not that great. What were the pain points in today's result is what we are going to understand and for that have a look at this. Now if you see here, uh, overall you will understand how does the company make money. Now if you can see here, the major revenue comes from food category. Almost 56%, be it H1 FY24 or H1 FY25, H1 is half year of financial year 23-24 and this is 24-25, okay. So it's almost the same, 56%, point something is okay. Share of revenue from non-FMCG, now what, what all things come up here, it could be home care, personal care, toiletries, other over-the-counter products, all these contribute to around 20% uh, revenue share. And if I'm talking about sh uh, share of revenue from general merchandise and apparel, that is accounting to roughly 23%. So what is the most important category as far as revenue is concerned, top line is concerned, that is the food category. Now who is bringing in more and more competition here? Nowadays, I'm sure everyone will understand this. Nowadays, if you are from metros especially, and that's what is the commentary that is given by the management, we are facing a huge competition, especially in metros, from the quick commerce apps. Be it food, I mean, be it grocery, daily needs, something like ice cream, beverages, confectionaries, all these are given, I mean, they are these categories are being ordered more from quick commerce rather than something like a DMART, okay? So, and especially there is, this is happening where in metro cities. So, if the share of revenue in the food is hampered, their top line can get hampered, is number one. Number two, what is important for general merchandise in apparel, it is about the profitability, okay? It is again very clearly mentioned that majority of the profits, the higher profitability comes from this specific category. And who is de denting their profitability there? Who is bringing in more and more competition? I'm sure everyone has heard about Trent. And Trent is bringing in a big, big, you know, competition, a very stiff competition for this company. Now, moving on to one more important point, I tried to check their con call. Uh, wherein this, this is not a con call of this Q2 results, this is the con call of Q1 results. So what did we understand right now? Okay, food is important for top line. General merchandise and apparel is important for bottom line. But where will the real growth come from? Will it be from the average order value or will it come from the growth of stores? Where will it come from? And this is a small example that you can see. Yes, this is a screenshot taken from their previous con call, wherein one of the investors had asked that where do you see the growth coming from? Where will be the growth trajectory coming from? And here the answer was given by the CEO very clearly that uh, it's getting more and more challenging to maintain a 15 to 20% CAGR. The growth rate, if I continue to grow at 40 stores per annum, the real driver of CAGR growth rate is accelerated by store additions. So what is the important point here? The CFO had also mentioned very clearly that main growth is going to come from where? Store additions. Okay. And he's saying that even if you are able to grow at 40 per annum, still the growth rate can continue. Now we'll have to check how many stores have they added. And for that, again, have a look at this. Now if you see here, 2021, their annual store addition was 22. In 22, they 
added 50 stores. In 23, they added 40. In 24, they added 41. Okay. Now, if I talk about half year 24, they have added, they had added only 12. And even in half year 25, they have added only 12 stores. So, I can say from 12, if they moved up to 41, it means that ideally in H2, second half, they are adding more stores. But even if they continue at the same pace, it will be exactly same number of stores that they may have added. But now if I were to understand, this is okay, half year, half year understood. But what about the this specific quarter, Q2 FY25, they added only six stores. Whereas if I were to compare this with Q2 FY24, they had added nine stores. So does this also tell me that there is somewhere a sluggishness in increase in store growth? Probably yes, probably. Yes. So we'll, it'll be interesting to see how many stores are they able to open by the end of this year. Now, if I were to go to one is store addition. Second one is how much is a store able to generate as a revenue. And for that, what we see is LF, LFL growth, that is like for like growth. What does that mean? It means that any store which generated, let us say, 100 rupees as a, as a revenue, last year and if it generates 110 rupees of revenue this year then i will say that the st lfl for that store is 10 percent okay that's the lfl growth now if i were to check uh, by the way any store which is more than 24 months old qualifies into the lfl criteria okay so let's check how much has the lfl growth been like and for that have a look at this now we see here q1 F fy24 the lfl growth was 8.1 percent what does it mean if I were to compare Q1 FY24 with Q1 FY23, then their LFL grew by 8.1%. Just to give you a quick example, assuming all the stores which are two years older, if their revenue was 100 rupees in Q1 FY23, now it is 108.1. If I were to consider only Q1 FY24. I hope you have understood the logic, right? Q2 FY24, it was 8.6%. Q1 FY25 is 9.1%. Good. But Q2 FY25 is 5.5%. Is there, I mean, this is not a degrowth, but has the pace at which the growth, I mean, at the pace at which growth happened, that pace is definitely going down. And 5.5% is nowhere even close to these previous growth rates, right? So is it a little bit concerning? Answer is obviously yes, right? Now, just to sum up whatever we did right now, uh, because this is what is the main fundamental analysis. We are going to understand the technical analysis also. But just to wrap up, can I say the revenue growth is a problem? Yes. Store growth is a problem? Yes. Uh, LFL, like for like growth is a problem? Yes. In fact, they have also mentioned that the biggest miss for Avenue Supermart super right now is that revenue growth was the slowest in the last four years. Okay, so... All these points also we have discussed. Also talking about the LFL that I was talking about, current LFL that I mentioned, which was 5.5%. If I were to compare this with a huge period of financial year 12 to financial year 20, that was at 10%. At that time, SSG used to be reported. That is same st same store sales growth. But SSSG was 10% and this is right now 5.5%. So overall, be it revenue, be it same store sales growth or LFL as we call now, be it the profitability, everywhere there are some pain points. And we also talked about profitability uh, Profitability is being, you know, damaged by some companies like Trent, let us say as an example, they're competitors basically. And also quick commerce is acting as a big competition for them. Now let's understand the technicals quickly. If I were to go on a daily chart, you can see that there was a gap here, uh, which had not been filled and today the stock is challenging this. So one of the supports could be around 4091, 4068 as per the gap filling theory. And if I were to draw, uh, by the way, this is now a weekly chart. If I were to draw an upward trending line, you can see here very clearly. Now this support would be a little bit lower than 4000, maybe in the range of 3900 to 4000. So what will be important to watch? What does DMART do next? Now that they understand that in metro cities, if quick commerce is posing them a big threat or posing them a competition is what I should say right now. Can they build capacities wherein they can also move to quick commerce is the next question. But I don't think that will happen overnight. It will take another three, four, five, six quarters maybe. So uh, 
let's see whether this stock goes in a sideways trend or what happens with this stock. It will be interesting to uh, watch this stock for sure. Do let me know in the comment section if you do hold this stock or not. And I hope you found uh, some value in this quick video. And if you don't, uh, did, don't forget to smash the like button. Uh, don't forget to share this video with your friends. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care. Jai Hind and bye-bye. You might have come across such advertisements on various social media platforms. Please note, all of these are fraudsters promising unbelievable returns through stock tips. I don't provide any calls or advisory services. I provide only educational content through my social media handles and through my website rachanaranade.com and rachanaranade.in.